My name is Joel Babcock, and I am the Administrative Services Manager of the Marxist Nudist Tax Relief Club. <laughs> Dr. Cornelius von Martel Hoops, Fantacular Tent of Spectastic Oddities, will be a small carnival tent that pops up around Toronto over the course of the summer slash early fall. The time and location of its appearances will be varied, so you might stumble upon it at 3 p.m. in Trinity Bellwoods uh, Park, or at midnight down by the waterfront. Uh, outside of the tent, the aforementioned Dr. C. Von M. Uh, will be enticing the public to step into the tent and confront the wonders that exist inside. If you are curious, curious enough to enter, you could find one of many things. Perhaps on the day that you enter, there will be a puppet show about a woman that goes to a grocery store one day only to discover that peanut butter no longer exists and no one else remembers that it ever existed in the first place. There could be a fortune teller with an unusual tarot deck featuring cards like the mechanical businessman, the well-dressed corpse, or the negative four of coins. There could just be a man in a walrus costume dancing to a violin and tuba duet. There could be a group of scientists that want to run a psychological exam on you, complete with ink blots, nebulous questions, and an atmosphere of condescending clinical authority. <laughs> there could be a voting booth for an absurd election where both candidates mean to do you physical harm, but they're the only choices that you have, so you can only either vote for a candidate that promises to punch you in the face if he gets elected, or one that wants to kick you in the stomach that you're ele if he's elected, but democracy, right? Or there might just be a television set on a table set to static, juxtaposed with the voice of a father reading a bedtime story to his daughter. And of course that one, uh, the doctor would not be around for, that would just be by itself, probably uh, midnight down by the waterfront, and it would be up to you to decide how long you stayed there or what to make of that. Um, there's many more ideas, those are just a few of them, and what this really boils down to is allowing my group, the Marxist News Taxonomy Club, to build essentially a portable lab from which to run experiments inside it. Why on earth should you do this? Uh, for it, <laughs> I know. Uh, for the remaining minutes that I have up here, I'm going to try to convince you that the MMT Club is a surprisingly practical group. One. We're budget conscious and have a track record of success. In our first year of operation, we only spent about $400 and we accomplished numerous uh, products or productions around the city, including Plug on a Surfboard Awareness Day, for which I'm wearing the shirt of today, the great 2012 Toronto Library prank, in which we uh, took fake books and put them into the library. Right now I have Penelope Grimshaw's Circus of Desire, which is about a high-powered female accountant that falls in love with a clown, but her father died from uh, choking on a pretzel in a comedy club, so it's difficult for her because she's repressed like her sense of humor for all of these years. Um, or we also run an event, uh, we're running the 10th anniversary of uh, free lemonade and signed photos of John Stamos on June 23rd, um, in which photos will be signed by an individual who is not John Stamos, has no relation, no relation to Mr. Stamos, and does not bear any particular physical resemblance to the celebrity in question, the aforementioned John S. And please, of course, no gang colors. <laughs> two. Two. The money that you'll be giving us, uh, you'll be getting a lot of value out of. About $500 of what you give us will be spent on essentially infrastructure items, including the tent, furniture, um, the puppet theater. Um, and we plan on using this tent this year and for many years to come. The remaining $500 will be spent on the incidental items for the numerous projects that we use. Three, the artistic scope of this project, I would say, is immense. It's, it's one project, but as you've heard, there are many, many projects coming out of it. And thus, I would like to coin this project as the Swiss Army Knife of Awesome Projects. <laughs> Plus, we're just going to be using a bunch of different artists around the city, from writers, illustrators, actors, dancers, musicians, builders, uh, like for the book that we had, this included a photo shoot, 
Um, so I mean, she's a local Toronto model. Um, we had a makeup artist involved. We had the copywriter doing the back. Except, imagine that for a tent that we'll be running all summer with a bunch of different projects. Um, four, even though um, it has such a large scope, this project is feasible because each of the mini projects uh, only requires a small amount of preparation time. So it might just take, say, a couple days to do the voting booth. It might take a couple of weeks to get together the tarot one because we want to make our own custom tarot deck. Um, but the projects as well can also scale. So we can do it on a smaller level or we can do things on a larger level. Like, uh, for example, the voting booth for this obviously would like to make some uh, videos for the candidates so that, like, leading up to the booth, you could watch online for candidate A talking about why you should vote for him for punching people in the face, or candidate B for kicking people in the stomach, and, and so on. So, lastly, I would like to address the elephant in the room. What is the Marxist Nudist Tax Army Club? The official answer is that we're a company which sells discount suitcases and janitorial supplies. The straight and narrow answer is that we are an artistic collective that likes experimenting in different mediums, adding our absurd touch to whatever we make. The most creative answer is this, and it is a little bit pretentious though. If you view Toronto as a brain, then the MNT Club is producing some of its dreams. And I don't mean dreams like dream job or dream house, which is simply a substitute for wishful thinking. I mean what dreams actually are. And those are experiences that can be exciting, funny, haunting, or downright confusing. And don't get me wrong, confusion is not a bad thing. Confusion is sometimes what is great in art. And that's, sorry. And yet, by mixing together the images and memories of life, Dreams produce, they produce new sights, new stories, new ideas that affect you, that get their claws into you, that you cannot shake, and that you remember. And that's why I believe, even though we are the most lunatic organization that you have up here asking for money, I believe that we're just as worthy of the thousand dollars. And that's that.